we are in for our second podcast for February's book, which was Pax by Sarah Pennypacker. Uh, my name is Mrs. Tamale Wan. I'm a sixth grade reading teacher. Here with me today is Rebecca Davies from sixth grade. It's Vitaly Fachenko from sixth grade. Charlie Jerky from sixth grade. Ansley Johnson from sixth grade. All right, guys. Thanks for coming in today and talking. Let's um let's start with our rating for Pax. What would be what was your overall rating? Like one to five, one being the worst book, five being the best book you've ever read. I would say. Pax was really a three, because it wasn't really able to draw me in or make me feel much emotion. But the paragraphs were, or like, the chapters were well-structured, the pacing was nice, and it could be considered a fun read for some. Yeah. Good. I gave it a two. It was just really boring and overly slow. It was, like, at a sloth pace. <laughs> but it did have a few of those parts that you were just like, oh, my gosh, let me read this now. I also gave it a three. I mean, at the beginning, I was like, okay, okay. But it, like Ansley said, it was really slow, slow paced, and I had to try really hard not to fall asleep while I was reading it. All right, well, Charlie, you I, had a different idea, right? I gave it a four out of five stars. Yay. Yay. Because I partially disagree with you guys because maybe it's just me, but I prefer stories about animals because animals. <laughs> and I really like the story. The character's design is really great. Vol is my favorite. Yeast. The experiences the characters went through, I wouldn't say they were that relatable, but... That's true. They're, some of them were pretty cool, and wow. the detail... I don't really think there was that much detail. And I liked how the... I did actually like how the author never really specified what time period it was in, which yeah. kind of left you to your own devices to think about yeah. it, it in your own you way. It you wonder, which is pretty it, much one of the really good things about this book. Like, that, if you search PAX up on Google, one of the one of the things that pops up is when is PAX, um, when, what time period is PAX supposed to be? And the author it could confirmed be, that it, there is no certain time period. It could be like um, World War One, World War Two, because if you read, if it's, they're in the middle of a war. Right. Or right at the end. Or but there's also a time when kids have lunch break, so. Well, and also, I think when I was reading, I was getting very frustrated with when is it, number one, but where is it? And I was like, oh, this yes. is a war. If this is on in America, this is a war on American soil. The only thing I can think of is a Revolutionary War or the Civil War. But, but so and it wasn't just, there, there was the, any one of them. That's the too far back. Mines. I thought those were really yeah, and like, Right. So just, it, it couldn't... Like that level of technology. Yeah, Once like they were talking about the underground mines, I realized this isn't America anymore. This is just a fictitious world. Yeah, yeah it's fictitious. It's not and like... Um, it, they never specified the technology, too, which would have been another way to just help you specify what time so you can again you just kind of are left to wonder because mm -hmm. you've yeah. got no technology to go off well of. they had a car right a car yeah. that's mm -hmm. true but I mean, that could have been mm -hmm. in the future it's if true. they specified what time period mm -hmm. and where they were it would have been Might it would have been, been considered like probably um dystopian probably or dystopian. historical historical fiction but what I thought is that I don't really think it's that much of a future because if it was, um, there's this theory. I'm not going to go too much in depth because it's a very long theory, but we can bend sound waves to travel through them. So if it was too far in the future, they would have already figured out how to do that, and he could have just found packs like that. Like, mm. he would have had a chip installed. Like it time travel? Just a theory. Kind of like that. It is, yeah. just a, it is just a theory, but we probably would have tell, been able to tell if it was further in the future. I don't think they had phones from what I could tell. I don't think yeah, so. And well, good like, point. They never that. specified, again, right. like, they never specified if anyone had phones, if anyone had computers. They, like, I feel they, like they, the author purposely did that. So they didn't even mention when they was talking about his father's photo of him and the dog. I don't know if this is a spoiler or anything. But it didn't mention whether it was black and white or colored. Mm -hmm. It didn't mention if it was black or white or colored. So it still leaves us to wonder, when was this? And it lets you, your imagination... Fly free. So then, that question leads me to wonder: as an author, why did why did the Sarah do Sarah Pennypacker? Why did she choose to do that? Why didn't she make it specific? What do you think her intention was in making it well, non-specific? I guess like it was just in the book flipped at the very end, where you can imagine Bryce and Julie's future. Mm -hmm. It and could be something just for the reader to wonder. 
Yeah. yeah. Like, it lets, like, it, maybe the author is just a person who doesn't like to have people set into, like, these rules, such as it happened here and like it happened dystopian. this time. Like dystopian, how it's like, everything's perfect, it's fine, but there's a couple flaws. Yeah. It's not like that. There's not such dead set rules. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's yeah. it can similar be, to it Refugee. Can be 2,597 for all we know. Right. And, and it could also be, well, not why well, actually. Sometime in the night. Yeah, it could yeah, be sometime like, in the sometime 1900s. Sometime in the 19 something. It could and be in some made-up continent. It can be anywhere. Unlike right. refugees, well, we do know we do know that they're not aliens. Number one, yeah. so they can't they can't go to another planet. Well, how do and we know that they're not aliens? Because <laughs> they do things that we do. They could be mutant human beings. Well, what if there's foxes and no magical oil spills? But or what anything? if there's life like ours on other planets, then it could We're technically too much if someone wanted it if to be. If we keep going in this track, I'm going to go into this amazing. My theory is that if you if the author made it historical fiction, like that was the Revolutionary War or the Civil War, or maybe it's in Britain and it's World War, you know, two or something or World War One, I, I think that it would have been the author would have had to do a whole lot of research. That's true. And make sure that all their facts are right, that all of the all of the So it's not parts of the story are accurate to the novel and that would be all like refugee you know alan gratz had to do a ton of work to make sure that that i think there's even something mentioning it in the very end of the mm-hmm. book it's like thanks to all these people and these are the websites they use it spent so much time researching and i had specific dates everything happened and it just seems like a lot of work i give props to historical fiction writers they yeah. not only have to write but they're doing a whole research on top of it to make right. sure that it's like, nothing's like it's kind of like an unless they anachronistic like, another out thing, of the time another out of thing place. is the war wasn't specified where it was is because they just said the war was coming mm-hmm. like i think that was mentioned a couple times in the yeah. book never mentioned what war yeah. where it was and related like, and when, honestly do we have to know the war because we maybe haven't experienced a war but we know that War is war, right? And mm-hmm. it's awful and it's yeah. terrible and and maybe the maybe the idea was to take the focus off of the smaller details and keep it on the characters and, like, and how I they go back deal to with the it. Historical fiction thing, like how writers have to work so hard. Like the writer of Hamilton, he wrote like the uh, musical. He spent like years writing it, mm-hmm. and even then, in the end, he still had mess- messed up a bunch of details, and mm-hmm. it was still historically in- inaccurate in some places. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, that's well, nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about the alternating narrators. There were two alternating narrators. We had Peter and Pax, and then we went back and forth in their stories. Sort of like um, Refugee, except that one was three narrators. Now we have two. Let's discuss. Let's t- talk about who, which character you related to the most, or you like to read the most. What are your thoughts? I thought Pax was honestly the more interesting yes. character because um, his parts were like more action f- action filled, which is what I want to read. I don't want to like kind of sit around and just read with no nothing going on, just nothing mm-hmm. i i felt like pax gave me like inspiration to continue reading because his parts yeah. i felt like his story yeah. was more developed he mm-hmm. is he is the actually the only narrator i guess in the book that actually kept me reading yeah i like and most of the characters are really good to relate to i think i connected to pax like just of just in general either because I felt I kind of felt his pain. He was trying to find someone that had raised him, so he didn't really know a different way. He probably struggled. Like he obviously did struggle at first, but he did slip into his role of being the wild pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Although he I, did still have the yearning for being with um, people. I mm-hmm. actually enjoy it. I feel I agree with them. I enjoyed reading Pax, but I can I can relate to him. The reason why I loved re- reading his chapters a lot more is because they were a little faster and a lot more interesting. Minus some parts in Peter's chapter, we'll get to later. Um, and I felt like I could relate to him by like when um, uh, I forgot his name dies. What's his name again? Um, the the older fox. What's his name? Um, the older fox. They never. Grum- I think it was gray. Hot was it? Grum- um, gray. Gray. I think it was gray. gray. It was either gray or grumpy. <laughs> I think it was grumpy. 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 We'll have to look at that. 
I'm sure. Oh, Gray. You're right. It was Gray. Yeah. And Gray died, and Pax was, like, trying to protect him. Mm-hmm. I've not really protected anyone from death, per se, but losing someone that you cared about. Mm-hmm. Because if you could tell by that point, Pax cared about Gray. He mm-hmm. felt... He didn't feel as close as he did to Peter, but he felt close enough to him that he was sad when he died. Mm-hmm. So that's what I kind of felt. I'm just like, oh, no. So maybe I was the only one. I enjoyed Peter's parts better. And actually, ironically, it wasn't because of Peter. It was because of Vola. I really thought she brought a yes. lot to the table, a lot to the story, a lot of um, emotional depth and um, a lot of maturity. She was kind of... Um, the the one who gives wisdom i yeah, felt like in the in the book she gave a lot of wisdom even though she did learn a lot from peter too i just really enjoyed she had some great uh, great like insights and moments that i enjoyed i also the part when um when he left pax i don't know there was part of me i guess because i've owned pets i've never abandoned a pet like that but i just it broke my heart, like, when he threw that in the... he what is, It was, like, a little G.I. Joe or something. Mm-hmm. He threw into the woods, and yeah. Pax went after it, and they got the truck and left, and Peter's guilt later. I, I don't know. I could... Even though I've never done that to a pet, I could relate to that guilt that, mm-hmm. you know, I have had a pet, like, escape the house, and I would be worried about that, you know, that... Mm-hmm. My cat, and, and I could so... Oh, that I could happens sympathize. every day to me. My cat is, like desperate to escape so like every day me and my family are having to like block her because she's like making a mm. mad rush for the door oh those cats oh i had oh. my cat actually run away mm. and we've not still not found her since oh yes yeah, <laughs> dad it's all she injury. kept okay. running my cat kept running away and then one time she just ran away and never came you're back. not getting the peter and pack story at home then <laughs> <laughs> Point. Okay. i don't even own a cat anymore i have I a have leopard a, gecko with a, a fish if i had to let him go i would die he's the I'm, best tiny spoof in the world i have a right. leopard gecko and a well, technically, it's my mom and leopard gecko and a fish. I don't think either can run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about... Um, we mentioned that this book is revolving around a war. That part of the setting we know. Um, let's talk about the cost of war. Vola, at one point, tells Peter, people should tell the truth about the war, about what war cost. What cost of war does each of the characters in the book pay? And, like, let's talk about the physical and emotional costs that the characters experience due to the war. Um, for I had, Peter, he had to get rid of his best friend, which, because of his father having to go, and then his having to go to his grandfather. I thought, I, I, like, I agree with yours, but I thought Vola had the most cost of wars. She, I mean, she lost her, she lost her leg in the war, and she mostly lost lost her self-confidence. She left. She lost her self-confidence to talk to new people, mm-hmm. to experience new things, and just altogether do, just altogether do, uh, I don't know what to call it, but. And both of them in the beginning, well, right, Peter. She, she lost a limb of her body, and she just lost an entire, she lost her self-confidence. I mean, I could never do that. Self-confidence is what makes me me, I mean. Peter? Um, he could have been, well, Peter and Vola both probably were depressed in the beginning that, because Peter didn't have the one person who even, I mean, there might be other people there for him, but Patch was the one there for him when he mm-hmm. was down. So was angry. his father, and he had to leave for war. I'm talking about the pet right now, Rebecca. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just trying to make sure you covered Vo- everything. I know. <laughs> and Vola had to be depressed in the beginning because of the leg. And mm-hmm. she was depressed in the beginning because she didn't know what to do. And the scene of her in the um, gro- grocery store, that was interesting. Like, be specific. Well, the like, scene, sad and, The like, scene that she was, um, starts on the groin on the floor crying. Mm-hmm. And that was just, like... Right, can you tell them, like, what was it that made her cry? Because I mentioned this part, too. Mm-hmm. Um... Do you she remember? had forgotten what type of food she liked to eat because of war. Right, because they had been feeding her, and when she finally got back to real life, when she was doing her own, she didn't even know what she even liked, or she couldn't even, like, her old life was so far gone from what she remembered. Mm-hmm. 
that's what I put down was that she just lost this sense of self or who she is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really, that's an awful feeling. That's a really awful feeling. I know I felt that before. Um, Um, When you just like lose who you, who you are and you got to find who was I, what did I used to like? What did I do? I can't say I can relate to that because I've never lost that. Well, I think for me it was, um, I, well, I'm older obviously, but having children and then, after you know those those children are so absorbing in the beginning when they're newborns and babies and you're doing everything for them really nothing for you and then you have a moment when you wake up and you're like I don't even recognize the person in the mirror anymore like who what did I used to do for fun mirror mirror on the wall who is this person (laughs) on mirror please right so I used to read books but I don't read books anymore because I'm so busy and and having to take that time to be like what do I like to do now that my life has changed so drastically Even though having children and going to war are very different things. But they're both (laughs) drastic changes to your life that you have to learn how to readapt afterward. So, was there anything for Pax or Peter? Um, I think we hit them. Let's move on to... I had dynamic characters. We We hit something for Pax. I didn't have anything. Um, Um, That's okay. We can move on. Dynamic characters? Um, So... For our audience, a dynamic character is a character that makes a really great change. And we have two characters that we felt like made really big changes, Pax and Peter. Let's discuss like how they changed and um, how Peter and Pax kind of view each other differently due to those changes at the end. I thought Pax made, like, he became more stable by himself. He didn't feel like he had to be around Peter because he was just ready to sit by that road and just wait for Peter to come back. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of learned that he needs to be able to depend on himself some too. Mm -hmm. He has his own life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other, what about Peter? Mm. He learns more about the world. He learned more about the world and kind of what it meant to, Mm, maybe he just thought he was an Brain. <laughs> so like <laughs> Peter's going, Peter's being hard right now. Thanks, Peter. Mm. Thanks, Peter. For so like, bleh. I kind of see what Jared was like. I think he may have learned kind of. Um, in the beginning, he was really just one track mind. I gotta find packs. I gotta find packs. I gotta find mm. packs. I gotta find packs. Like in the end, he sort of became more like. He, um he became more open and aware of other people's feelings. Like Bola, mm-hmm. he went against what she said and like his chance of finding Pax and he helped, like, he helped her in a different way instead by like teaching her, like herself, getting her self-confidence back and like getting her to teach people what she knows and really sharing her wisdom with the world. Bola's an all-knowing being now. Yep. I thought that about Peter, too. I thought he learned a lot about himself, that the journey he went on to Pax wasn't just a physical journey. It was, like, an emotional journey, a growing up journey. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I thought, and that reminded me of Refugee. Yeah, it's true. Because that age. those three narrators went on a growing up Coming of age story. Coming of age story. And did, did you plan this to be similar at all? I did not plan that, but that's cool that we that's can make cool that connection. Sense. That they both were. But don't you feel like middle school literature probably has a lot of coming of age stories? Okay, mm-hmm. that is a very great point you make there. That is very true. Because, because you're coming of age. And they're like, you need to well, learn some stuff. You need to learn some stuff. You are stuff disrespectful. In your brain because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, I think. Or yeah. That's how I feel yeah. middle school. Oh, really? like, it's like, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Do this. Did you feel like Pax came off as, like, trying to hammer a lesson into the reader or did you feel no. like kind of like teaching le- like a sermon kind of, I feel both? like it was kind of more like teaching. like didactic mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. what that means but okay that mean yeah. didactic is like when the intention is to teach you not to necessarily entertain you I think yeah maybe that was it because um Rebecca I don't know if you already said this but she made a great point earlier when she said maybe it's about like was it? I'm gonna use it in a minute. Oh well, I said it. Well, like, what do you mean when? 
Um, yeah, I'll talk about that. In yeah. A okay. 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 It's just, she just made like a strange theory about it. She made a very gr- she made, just made a really great point, and I think it fits into something later. So we will get to that. All right. So should we do the final words? Yeah. Let's talk about the final words. So the final words of the book were really interesting. They weren't in regular text. It was like an image with a handwritten text across it that said, "Sometimes the apple rolls very far from the tree." What do we think about these words? What do you think they mean for Peter? I thought, like, Peter most likely wrote them to kind of, like, just to remember that. that about that. To and that you're not always the same as everyone everyone like, else. His yeah, like, was just prepared like to... his family, his family was the exact same. His father and his, father and his grandfather were the same. They wanted to, because his grandfather had to take his, Peter's father away from his dog and now Peter's father is doing the same thing but Peter went to find his his pet and instead he of let him go on his own accord instead of having to um, do it like be forced to do it right. so then let's take it about a step back what is the actual uh, phrase that this is coming from what do you guys um, know the actual phrase the people a- say the apple oh, doesn't fall from, from the, fall far from from the the, fall, the fall apple doesn't the fall very fall very far <laughs> from the tree. <laughs> which yeah. is like, um, which is kind of like usually it's used for like a mother or a father yeah, to like a if child. Fam- if your family's very similar, like, like I'm gonna he's silly, so her their children are silly, or they. It's kind of like my mom and dad are assumption. My mom and dad are drastically different personalities. My dad's more kind of like kept to himself, but my mom's my mom's still kind of kept to herself, but she's kind of more out there. I kind of got a mixture of that. Oh, yes. So I I'm, can, like, I can I'm like mediocrely far from the tree. I'm not all the way down at the football field, but I'm not like, I'm not the trees. So then root. the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. We're basically saying means children are most like, they're like their parents. They're yeah. most, maybe sometimes, because I mean, everyone has their own personality. Yeah, like mm-hmm. when mixes there are, and mixtures of personalities, and I guess it's really rare to find someone with the same personality. Like that you whenever, do. even then, it's hard to get along. With yeah, them. whenever there's villains or heroes in a story, like someone will always like tell their children that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Like if they suddenly decide to become the hero or villain, mm-hmm. and it's it's always a phrase that's used. So you Have said you superheroes. Been? That reminded me of something. <laughs> Superman is great at everything. But his cousin, Supergirl, if you watch, like, the beginning of the series, it's not very good at all. The apple must have fallen very far from the tree there. Yeah. So then how can we relate this back to Peter then? How do you think he's going to live his life in a way that isn't like his the people before him? I well, don't think he's going to abandon people. I think he's going to start stand, staying more by their side. And, right, like, you're not, lost, my, you're not my teammate. He lost his father to going to the war, but maybe he doesn't. And he found out that his father didn't even have to go into the war. Right. His father told him he had to and lied to him. But later he found out, I think it was by Vola yeah, telling him. Because sure. he said, yeah, my father got drafted for the war. And she asked how old he was. Peter answered. And she was like, that means he had to choose to go. Because I guess Peter thought maybe he doesn't care about me. Yeah, this actually reminded me of a quote that came up earlier in the book. Before he got to his father, he said, what if... What if it, well the narrator said what if he was like his father, what the uh, with that threatening kind of anger that kind that was always simmering the kind that could boil over at any time and hurt everyone in its way, the apologies afterward never healed the damage, and it was like, man that has to be a a worry that you would have like wondering, am I gonna be like my parent especially if you see qualities you don't like, and. Yeah. You know, hoping th- that you aren't going to be like that. For the father going off to war, maybe, maybe, okay, since this is going to be a bit of a stretch, but maybe he was avenging Peter's brother. Maybe it was, oh. may, I don't know, but that could be something. That could be a reason. Because ki- it's a war. What do you expect? Murder's going to happen. What do you, unless it's mm. the Cold War, you, in, it didn't sound like a Cold War type of thing. Mm. So it might be him avenging Peter's mother. It Um, could be. You guys want to move on to theme now? Sure. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about a major theme in the novel. The lesson we obviously have identified this lesson. This book was trying to teach us something. 
So, so what could be a lesson that we learned? Friends gonna, will always look for you. Yeah. I was going to go for a stretch, and I'm going to say it's a story about um, kind of, like, getting over things and letting things go. That's so, nice. like, I like that. I kind of thought, like, maybe it could have possibly been an imaginary story, like, about the boy try, a boy trying to find, like, the spirit of his loved one or something, and, like, in the end, he finally lets it go, and moves on with his life mm -hmm. it, it's just a um it's just a stretch but it does make sense mm -hmm. like, and that's what i was saying earlier i thought it made sense because he's different because his father probably didn't pursue trying to find his dog very far mm -hmm. so to add on to what i said the front wall was like for you my example from it is peter's just gonna go find pax after giving him to the woods which is the entire plot Exactly. Of the novel. And he never gives up, no matter what. He's always going to search for Pax. I feel like there should have been some points in the book where he actually would have thought of giving up. Then it would have made it, like, you. that would have made it more, like, conscious. He would maybe walk back. It would have added more conflict. It would have made the story somewhat more relatable. Like, if he was like, what am I doing out here? Is exactly. this really worth it? In a more human. We always, yeah, we always think, we always have this time where we... Mm -hmm. Are ourselves. so confident, and then we suddenly doubt ourselves. We are about to give up, and then sometimes we just don't. We turn around and we just continue on. And I agree. I think that could have probably deepened his character if he mm -hmm. had moments of self doubt or wonder. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Yeah, the a author show. humanize him. Yeah, the author was really just trying to make him look like a person that just iron determination. He had no self doubts and complete confidence in himself which mm -hmm. it sounds good but it doesn't really make him very relatable in a show that i watch named ruby there is in the newest season i don't want to spoil anything if you any if anyone is watching it what's the show ruby it's the mm -hmm. english show mm -hmm. it, there is Art. points of them self-doubting of whether they should go do what they're doing or should they go back and stop doing it? Mm -hmm. They're going after the big villain, and they don't. They're by then they're questioning themselves: Should I keep going? Should I stop? Should we go back? They have, and that made that it made that made the story more interesting. While here in Pax, it's kind of just like straightforward. I'm going to find him, no matter what. I must find him. I cannot give up. I have to. Have to. Have to. There is no room for doubt at all. I am the best yeah. at finding animals. I put, for my theme, I put um, every person makes their own choices, and it doesn't have to be like the people born. What, what do you have to say about that, Vitaly? Um, well, I think it's honestly really true. He was, um, well, like it said at the end of the book, the apple sometimes falls very far from the tree, and... Um, Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter was not very much like his father or grandfather, and he just pretty much learned to accept it. Learned that he can make his he can make his choices. He can be himself, not his father, his grandfather. Right, which is a pretty like mature decision for a preteen to make. You know, that to not be. Did right. we even get his age? Um, I thought he was. Wasn't he twelve? I, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. He was 12. I thought there was something that indicated he was 12. I don't know. All right, so let's move on to our recommendations. So, guys, if you really liked PAX, we have some books that we think you might like. I, oh, okay. You go ahead. I was going to say, I think, I think if you read PAX, you might like A Dog's Way Home. It's a more intriguing adventure about a, about like a canine trying to find his way back to his owner and it's about like it's another it's another of another friendship that no distance that no distance can break kind of thing mm -hmm. great i did um a dog's life by ann m martin i haven't read it yet but i've seen a lot of kids over the years check it out in my classroom so i know it's well liked i know that it's about two dogs that are like feral born feral and um, their mother is, like, they're orphaned one day from their mother. 
and they have to kind of make it in the world on their own. And I believe it's told through their perspective, which is really interesting, and how they deal with human interaction, good and positive human interaction. And eventually the two get separated from each other and have to find their way back, which is kind of like Pax in a little bit. Um, so yeah, that was mine. So, uh, anyone else have any? Nope. No. All right. All right so let's do our final discussion questions. I think Rebecca's got these down for us. Yep. So the first one is, what's your rating for this book? Like, we all gave it, Charlie gave it a four. Um, me and Vitaly gave it a three. Ansley gave it a two. And I gave it a three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just let us know what you, what you thought. And what advice from Bola would you take? Bola gave a lot of good advice to Peter. So... I, we think it would be, we want to know what kind of advice you would take from Bola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. And um, so our next book for March is going to be Booked by Quim Alexander. I'm really looking forward to this book. It's really different than what we've read before. And it's really good. I've already read it. It's yes. It's, um, it's, if you like soccer, this is a book for you. And it's told in verse. So it's like a long poem, which makes it a little bit shorter. And um, so, guys, participate online by adding to the blog discussion, or you can um, respond to this podcast and add your feedback to the discussion questions. And thanks for listening. We'll see you next month.